Hello everybody and welcome back once again here on Ayers Holt Farm. Um, we've gotten into early part of autumn now. Um, I did go out and have a quick look this morning at our fields. Uh, we got three fields left to harvest after a rather intense summer, late summer period. Uh, we got a millet field, uh, we got a corn field and we got a potato field but none of them are ready here in early autumn so it's going to be into mid autumn and possibly even late autumn um, before they're ready. However we still got stuff to be getting on with. Um, in between episodes I did go ahead and spread lime on the fields that needed it. I uh, had a little bit of time we got the bales cleared up, got them sold off so even though uh, we upgraded our class area uh, in the last episode and spent a lot of money we're back up to 205,000 euros. So the main jobs today is um, starting to do some ground care. Um, we have a field that needs plowing. Um, it's it's part of the cycle and uh, we are gonna get, if I can get this dog, we're gonna get one of our T7s here um, hooked up with front weight and then we're gonna put one of the aerobic layer subsoilers on and bring that one up to the field. And that'll be our first job here with 315, I think it's 313 horsepower on, on the game. Um, we are gonna get that underway first. So, we are just gonna head over here first uh, because over between the two sheds here is where I tend to keep the front weights. Uh, we only have two, uh, there's one mounted on our uh, John Deere 6R as well, but for this uh, it's just a 650 kilo weight, it's not a humongous amount, um, so they're a little bit light on the front, but they seem to be managing the job just fine. And um, we have our aerobic layer subsoil sitting over here in the shed. Obviously, um, during the harvest period it was quite busy so I did get most machinery cleaned up in between as well because everything was in a bit of a frightful mess uh, towards the end of the last episode uh, we were starting to wash some things up but here we go um, this is a five meter subsoil we're kind of right on the range with this New Holland in terms of uh, being able to say it could have done with a little bit of a wash but in terms of wear and tear this thing's still looking absolutely fine. Um, I think they they don't see that much action because we really only need to sort of plow the soil every third year or so. So um, we'll get this one up to the field and uh, we'll get started with that job. And then we're going to start looking because we have grass ready to cut and we want to cut it for silage. Um, we're not going to be cutting it this episode, but um, I need to empty out one of our silage clamps. Um, it has a bit left in it, not a huge amount, um, about 150,000 liters, which is of course still oh, <laughs> hidden, hidden offense here. Um, it's a decent amount of silage, but uh, we've got 450,000 sitting in the clamp next door. And um, oh dear, we're struggling a bit up the hill here. It is, yeah, we probably should have a bit more weight on the front here. I think it's just, yeah, oh, it is lifting off. I really should invest in uh, a heavier front weight uh, for this job, I think. That is definitely something we need to do. But, as you can see, uh, we kind of made it up to the field, a little bit scrappy here. Um, this one has had lime put down it, so we're going to plow that in. And uh, then the idea will probably be to put some cover crop on this one so we get that fertilization. So it's had two years of cereal on this one. So we are wanting to put another crop on uh, this time around. So our worker is just getting down to the starting position here. And um, already getting quite a bit of lime dust onto the machine here, but um, yeah, we can wash it. It'll be fine. So, we got our first job underway. Uh, it's 
it's a pretty decent sized field for, for this 5 meter subsoiler, but we'll get through it. So back down here on the farm, um, a second job is also uh, a ground job uh, because obviously in the last episode we um, made an investment in a much larger cultivator, um, the Horsch Joker, and uh, we also got our class Syrian upgraded to the higher horsepower range, and uh, we got the broad tires onto it. So. We're going to take that over to one of the other fields that has been had lime uh, put on it and we're going to rip that open uh, also with a view of putting uh, cover crops on and uh, get that extra layer of fertilization. Now it might seem a bit strange to be putting so much cover crop up but um, we do have our own seed cleaning plant now so basically we can create our own seed here on the farm and obviously that makes a job like that quite a bit cheaper. So now I just got to find out if I can, why I can't hit this right now. Let's see, here we go, there, good. So let's just hop out and have a look. This is a much, much bigger cultivator uh, than our previous five meter ones. I think this one's about 12 meters width. So we do need the horsepower to pull it but um, we're gonna make uh, a lot quicker job. Uh, but that's good because it is the large field um, where we harvested the canola uh, that we are going to cultivate. So it's, it's a big job. Uh, so it's a good thing that we now have a bigger machine to do it with. And once again, the color uh, of the tires are giving it away that uh, this field of course got limed as well. Um, there were three fields uh, that got lime spread but um, I was using our um, case titan so it's a fairly quick job it moves fairly fast over the field but we are putting our horse joker here to work for the first time on the farm and uh, Looking at the width of this thing, certainly a lot, lot better um, than what we're used to. So that is brilliant. So that's two jobs on the way, um, our plowing and our cultivating. Uh, those are the main field works that we're going to be doing today. But I'm heading down here to our workshop. I should probably close the gate here actually, just to keep things a bit tidy. We need our truck um, because we are going to be transporting stuff. So the main thing to get done is to get our silage pit cleared out. Um, we're going to try and use the conveyor belts, but I did have a little experiment with the conveyor belts. I moved them over to where we're keeping all the straw pellets, and unfortunately it looks like we're not going to be able to shift the straw pellets with the help of the conveyor. I, I would have to find a modded one instead. Um, so we're probably not going to be doing uh, selling the straw pellets this episode. Uh, it's, it's one of those jobs. We had a look last episode and there's no seasonal variation um, in the price of straw pellets that's worth noticing really so what we can do is we can wait um, and I'll see if I can find um, a belt that will help us unload alternatively we're simply gonna have to do it with a telehandler and uh, tip it straight into the uh, trailer here instead but for now, uh, we're going to have to shift the conveyor belts back over because I do want to try and use the conveyor belts to, to the extent we can. 
to get the silage shifted into the truck here. Uh, this trailer takes about 60,000 liters. Whoops, eating some leaves here. Um, and so we got three runs uh, up to the biogas plant, which we also bought a few episodes. As you can see, here's our pit. It, neither of them are sort of super full, but we are going to get, I reckon, more than 150,000 liters coming in off of three fields uh, when we start doing the next cut for silage. We got quite a lot of hay already, so I reckon basically all of it is going to go into silage generation because obviously we can sell that to the biogas plant afterwards. Maybe I should just, I'm just going to pull this forward a little bit more because we want room to be able to navigate um, the conveyor belts in. We will bring the telehandle over so we can scoop stuff into the area of, of the conveyor belts if it becomes necessary. So I'm just running the extension out um, so that we don't have to try and get the truck too close. There's plenty of height here um, to reach up over the top of the truck so we should be fine to start loading now. There we go. We are loading. Got the belts running and as long as we move the truck occasionally just to level the load a bit we should be good to head up um, to the biogas plant uh, shortly with a full load of silage. Now when we sell up the biogas plant we obviously don't get the money straight away. Uh, it's an overnight uh, job. We'll see how much we manage to deliver. Um, but that's, whoops, don't want to take it right out to the edge. Just wanted to try and bring it up so we fill the front here a bit first. And then we can move down. But in the meantime, we can just see how our field work is going as well. And as mentioned, we are going to bring the telehandler over. Um, it will be able to help just um, scoop up and push in any uh, corners where we can't quite reach with the belt. Rather than having to shift everything around, uh, I think this will be alright for what little, hopefully, um, won't be able to be picked up by the belt straight away. Um, we can do a little bit of work on that just pushing things and taking it off the edges while we're waiting for the truck to fill. Although I don't think it's too long before our first load is ready. Yeah. Right around uh, where we're going to be working. And kind of just tip it here at the, the base of the belt. out that the lorry is full so we're just gonna pile this up here and uh, then we're gonna get our truck moving up to the biogas plant so as we can see we're still having very decent weather here on the farm we've been incredibly lucky um, so far over the summer and autumn period here it's getting colder we're down to 13 degrees ground temperatures are still pretty high which is good for our corn we want that growing um, 
we haven't looked at the forecast. Let's take a quick look. Right, so we're looking at, let's see, Sunday and Monday are also early spring. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are mid spring. Oh dear, and it's all rain. That's the time when we could potentially have some more harvest ready. But <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see how we cope with that. Um, obviously we can't control the weather. We just gotta roll with it and see how it goes. But for now, we'll get up to the biogas plant with this and uh, we'll get our first load out. We can see the Zerion working over here in the background. So things are still moving here on the asphalt, even though we can take it a little bit easier today. It's not quite as stressful. Last couple of episodes, there was an awful lot going on all the time. Today we got these three jobs and uh, that's pretty good. So um, we got one little handy job. Um, I've been kind of accumulating uh, eggs over quite a while. Let's see, that's the full one. Um, and we haven't really sold them. And although the truck is looking a bit mucky, I reckon now is as good a time as any to um, get some of the egg boxes out of this shed, get them down to, uh, I think, the camping ground and then get them sold. So there we go, we have 16 boxes. Um, I'll try and see if I can fit them all in to the um, back of the pickup here. <laughs> I'm not gonna make you watch it all, don't worry. Um, so, like a certain famous farmer on YouTube, uh, imagine I'll snap my fingers while we look at it here, and then it should be full. And snap! There we go. Okay, you might have noticed that I, uh, <laughs> I, I angled the car so it was a bit easier to get them on. But um, we should be good now. Oh, better put straps over, and then we should be able to close up the tailgate without everything going crazy. Um, so we'll head down there, get these sold, and um, I think our driver has arrived out at the PGA in the meantime. So. Um, while I drive down, we can have a quick look at getting the first load of silage delivered uh, to the PGA. So we are here at the PGA and uh, we can reach over and tip in our first load. It should go more or less straight in like that. Let's see if we back up close enough, it at least looks like it's almost going straight in. But um, as you can see, money's not going up for this. Um, that will be a midnight payment so it will be the next episode before we see exactly how much and we have managed to fill it so we're just gonna have to wait let's see it's it's going down a bit but by the time we've sold the eggs uh, this should have gone down enough that we can unload the rest uh, before heading back to the farm so we're just heading down the slightly Bumpy gravel road here to the camping uh, site. Um, not too far. I hope we don't crack too many of the eggs here on the road. Um, I think they need to look at getting a few of the holes filled in soon. But we have arrived. We just need to go down past the barrier here. Obviously, this is kind of the, the boat club, but that's a nice little bar as well. Um, better get the eggs sold then we'll find out if we can uh, allow ourselves to have a, a quick drink as well. Whoop. Better not run over any of the uh, customers. That would not be a good way to start our uh, sale here. But there we go. Yeah, so we're making about 640 euros a box here. That's pretty good considering we had 16 of them. sold now. There we go. That took us up to 215,000 euros. Nice. I reckon <laughs> since since things are kind of working, we're just waiting for that silage to run out. We'll have a quick stop here. 
by the boathouse. Uh, some nice boats sitting here. Uh, be nice if I could uh, find a time to get myself one of these. I personally, I'd prefer a sailing boat, but um, even that motorboat there. Oh, somebody's like sunning themselves. It'll be a bit rude to stand here and stare, but I guess we got time for a quick cup of coffee here, or alternatively, I do believe that there's a bar upstairs as well. Jukebox is on. Drinks all around. Oh, looks like the staff is having a little break, but I'll have a quick game of pool. And then we'll get back to farming. Right, the plant has caught up. We could get the last bit unloaded here so we can get back to the farm and uh, do another top up. And uh, while we're driving back, just do a little quick check up on how our groundwork is going. Um, obviously with the new horse joker on the Zerian, uh, I think we're gonna get through that field a lot quicker. Normally it's, it's like a whole day job um, for the smaller cultivators we had. So the T7 working away here uh, is doing an excellent job. My only question here will be whether we're going to have enough fuel um, to finish off the field or whether we're going to have to stop, head down to the farm and, um, and fuel up before the day is over. And there's still quite a lot of work to do for the Zerian. It's obviously moved up, it's done the whole bottom corner of the field there, just left enough room for the headlands. Um, I think it's going to finish this corner and then we're going to work over uh, towards the other side of the field but there's still a fair old bit to go here. Of course place says it's going to take an hour and a half of real time uh, work on this field. So it's taking a while but uh, yeah it would have taken twice as long with our 5 meter cultivator. Speaking of which we have two 5 meter cultivators still sitting in the shed. Uh, with this new joker on the farm. I don't think we're gonna need both of them. So the last thing we're gonna do today while work is going on elsewhere is we're gonna grab a tractor. We are gonna um, take one of those cultivators. We we'll probably need to give it a, a, a quick service. And then we're gonna take it down to the dealership and see how much we are gonna get for it because there's no point in holding on to two of them, I reckon. So we'll uh, use the other T7, we don't need to put a front weight on it, it's just a transport job today. Um, let's see, yeah, we're half on fuel, plenty to, to make it down there. Um, we'll keep the cultivators over here as you can see. So I think, I mean they've, they've run the same, the same number of hours and everything like that, so doesn't really matter which one of them we pick. This one is furthest out front, so I guess we'll grab... It. I mean, these Agrimas are really good cultivators. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just that with the size of the fields that we're starting to move up into, we need something a little bit bigger. We'll probably keep the other one around to do some of the medium-sized uh, fields. We don't really have small fields per se, perhaps except for the one where we've got potatoes. And it'll be handy enough to have one um, to do a quick job on, on something like that. But I am hoping, basically, at some point, probably bring in possibly another joker, especially if we lease more fields. I guess in, in the ideal world, we'd have enough space to unfold these. It's one of the things um, I am considering whether there's somewhere where we can potentially establish a bigger workshop for the farm. Okay, it's in very good condition, so 10 euros will do it. Um, we could of course sell it directly at this trigger, but we should get a little bit more for it if we take it down to the dealership. And it's, it's, it's not an excessively used uh, machine here. Um, perhaps I should have put it up for sale in the Farm Sim magazine over on FS Nation. Um, 
but timing wise I think there's just been a magazine out so it'll be a little while and um, I think I want to make space here on the farm but we'll consider that for the next machinery that we're going to be trading and as we're heading down our truck is back starting to load back up again um, so we'll see how much we get for our cultivator while I just um, set this silage to load and then in the next episode here on Iosalt we are gonna be cutting some grass and I'll try and see if we can get around to getting some of those straw pellets sold as well even we'll see if we can find a um, a different belt system how much it is whether it's worth it alternatively we are simply gonna be shoveling them up manually uh, into the trailer here and then we'll see whether the many hours we spent with the Crone Primos on, on creating those pellets was worth it in the end. But we'll better see what's going on down at the dealership. So here we are with our Agromass. Uh, we'll get it reversed up. They usually do their evaluations and stuff over here by the workshop so that they can inspect it and we'll find out how much it's going to sell for. Right, so here we go. It has only ran for 1.4 hours and it's valued at 21,225, so we'll sell it. But uh, with a look at a nice T7315 here, uh, some field work going on. Um, that's the first part here at early autumn. We still got some silage work to do in the next episode and then as we move into mid-autumn, uh, we'll be back on some more harvest. That is, if the rain doesn't hold us off completely. But for now, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you're still enjoying the series. Um, see you again soon from Overcourt Gaming.